In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. Today is Thursday, the 9th of May, 2019. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. The Gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 6, verses 44 to 51. I read from the first reading. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Set out at noon and go along the road that leads from Jerusalem down to Gaza, the desert road. So he set off on his journey. Now, an Ethiopian had been on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. He was a eunuch and an officer at the court of the Kandake, or Queen of Ethiopia. He was her chief treasurer. He was now on his way home, and as he sat in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go up and join that chariot. When Philip ran up, he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How could I, unless I have someone to guide me? So he urged Philip to get in and sit by his side. Now the passage of scripture he was reading was like this, Like a lamb led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep dumb in front of its shearers, he never opens his mouth. In his humiliation, Third judgment was denied him. Who will ever talk about his descendants since his life on earth has been cut short? The eunuch addressed Philip and said, Tell me, is the prophet referring to himself or someone else? Starting therefore with this text of scripture, Philip proceeded to explain the good news of Jesus to him. Further along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, this is some water. Is there anything to prevent my being baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop then, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water and he baptized him. But after they had come up out of the water again, Philip was taken away by the Spirit of the Lord, and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on on his journey rejoicing. Philip appeared in Azotus and continued his journey, proclaiming the good news in every town as far as Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God reveals himself to simple souls. God reveals himself to simple souls. Beloved in the Lord, part one of the Catechism of the Catholic Church talks about the profession of faith. In section one, 
chapter 1 of this part, the focus is on man's capacity or desire for God. It explains that man is incomplete without God. Therefore, he yearns and desires to know God, and he can search and know God because he has that capacity. It is within his competence. That desire for God is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God, and God never ceases to draw man to himself. Only in God will man find the truth and happiness he never stops searching for. Confirm Numbers 27 to 30 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. But how can man come to know God? How can he satisfy this quest and search? There are some proofs of God's existence, especially from nature, yet we must admit that though with the capacity to know God, man is limited to know such an incomprehensible being as God. The church teaches that faith and reason are necessary to know God, yet it is God who takes the greater initiative to reveal himself to us. Confer the encyclical letter, Fides et Ratio, of Pope St. John Paul II. We may have little glimpses of who God is, but it is He, God, who reveals Himself to us, for us to know Him, because if God does not do that, with our limitedness, we can't fully get to knowledge of Him. The fullness of God's revelation is in Christ Jesus, Galatians chapter 4, verses 4-7. to In Jesus, we come to know who God is, for He says, To have seen me is to have seen the Father. We can know God also through the Scriptures, but it is his word. That is God's word. He reveals himself to us in his word. We can also know him through the breaking of bread because he reveals himself to us in the breaking of the bread. The desire to know God begins with a certain curiosity, a certain thirst and longing which is motivated by an emptiness seeking to be filled up. When you want to know, you become curious. You ask questions to know and to learn. This is different from asking questions not to know but to challenge. Some are not curious enough. They are contented with their mediocrity or ignorance. But God's good people, we should seek to know. If truly you desire to know God, if truly you desire to love Him, you want to know more about Him. When you love, for example, a boy or a girl, don't you seek to know much more about them? You do. The psalmist says, Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is thirsting for you, my God. Psalm 42 verses 1 to 6. This is exactly what happened in the first reading. The Ethiopian eunuch was yearning for God. He was curious. He wanted to know and he was reading, though he could not understand. Philip then took off time and explained to him what he was reading. The eunuch, with his capacity and desire for God, opened up his heart and was baptized. He sought God and he found him. He sought wisdom and intelligence and they were given him. God's good people, we are invited to be like the eunuch in today's reading. If truly you desire to know God, seek him in simplicity of heart and soul and he will show himself to you. God cannot be reduced to logic, intelligence, science, and mathematical exactitude. He is above all that. That explains why only the simple of soul and heart are open to him and he reveals himself to them. Matthew chapter 11 verse 25. While the greatest atheists are greatest intellectuals, they think they can know God with their intelligence and what they cannot comprehend they consider false. Yet, God has hidden these things from the intelligent and wise and revealed them to mere children, those who are humble who bring themselves down. To know God requires simplicity of heart and soul. Put down and forget your intelligence and degree. Many really want to know God and they seek to know Him. Read the Bible, beloved. Read the Bible. Meet those who can to help you. Others do not know God and rather than ask to know, they rather challenge those who serve him. They think they are too intelligent and can argue everything out by logic and science. And when they talk, 
you see just how empty they are and how they express and portray their emptiness. God goes beyond intelligence. If intelligence was proportionate to knowledge of God, then all the billion academic doctors and professors we have would be the giants in the faith. But it is not so, beloved. The simplest of souls, even uneducated, are rather the greatest spiritual gurus. Do not be proud in your ignorance or contented in your shallow knowledge of God. Seek God in humility and he will reveal himself to you, just like the eunuch did. He read. He sought to know. He asked important questions and answers were provided and he grew in his faith and sought baptism and was baptized. If we want to use our intelligence, we want to use mathematical formulas, use science to challenge rather than seek God, I tell you, we would live empty-handed. Let us bring ourselves down. It is not about how much we know. It is not about what degree we have. In order to know who God is, it requires a simple soul. It requires a simple heart. And I tell you, in your simplicity, God will reveal himself to you. And you will come to know who he is in his real self. Let us beg God for that grace of humility, like the eunuch, to bring ourselves down, to go off our high horses, and God will reveal himself to us. We would know him and we would serve him better. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.